Hello, everyone. So I once again had no idea what I was going to record today. No idea. And then I decided to look at the notes on my phone where I just keep all video ideas and stuff like that. And I forgot that I used to do these. Uh, it's been a bit, but you know, I think we could bring it back now. So I went back to the last one that I remember doing and found a comment. So boom, we're going to be doing the highest paid player on each team. So how I'm going to be doing it actually is I'm going to be doing it based off of the cap hit because I think, you know, that's basically how a team measures the expense of the player because it goes against their cap and you have to stay within the limit. So yeah, that's, that's how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to go based off of the 2020, 2021 season. And I think there's one thing I wanted to do quick beforehand, because I know they haven't done it yet, but Minnesota, let's go here and then switch this to free agents. So Suter and Parise have both been bought out. So let's drop them to free agency. So taking up nearly 10% of Anaheim's cap from the, I guess, most recent hockey season was Ryan Getzlav actually at, his cap hit was 8.25. So yeah, there you go. Getzlav's a free agent. If anyone's curious, by the way, I'm using a website called Spotrack. Spotrack? I don't know. But either way, they have a lot of stats on here. So I'm just going to assume it's legit, and if not, close enough. But anyway, we got OEL here, who took up 10.34% of the cap, but he was also 825, so I guess they were, you know, not as close to the cap limit as the Ducks were. Surprisingly, the biggest cap hit for Boston last year was David Krejci, so he is becoming a free agent. I sort of thought it was going to be Jeff Skinner. I wasn't exactly sure how much Eichel was making, but it is Eichel. It was making 10 flat, or it was a 10 flat hit against the cap anyway. The man who apparently asked an out, I don't know how true that is, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, he is, in fact, going to be a free agent. And I guess Giordano technically won't be on the team either because he's been taken by Seattle, but... Yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and drop Chucky. The biggest hit against the cap for Carolina last year was Sebastian. Patrick Kane for Chicago here is heading to free agency. That is the best player yet at 92 overall. For the Colorado Avalanche, it was Miko Rantanen. So yeah, it wasn't Nate Mack. And next up, we got Columbus. I'm assuming it's going to be Wierenski. So I'm going to send him over now, but I'm a do a quick fact check on that. A good thing I decided to check that because it's actually Cam Atkinson. All right, well, let's go ahead and complete that transaction. Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan are both very close, but it is in fact T. Weiler who had the bigger cap hit last year. No way! Henrik Zetterberg had a $6 million cap hit last year? He almost had the most. Like, he is right there with Larkin. We're talking about 20 grand difference. That is insane. But anyway, it is in fact Larkin. I'm sure this surprises nobody, but McDavid, there you go. Florida, I think it's Bobrovsky. I'm gonna, once again, I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure they signed him to an outrageous deal. Bobrovsky was correct, and Dewey will be the player for the LA Kings. Zach Parise and Ryan, or yeah, Ryan Studer. I don't know why, when I said Ryan for some reason, it felt like I was saying his name wrong, but no. Ryan Suter and Zach Parise, both very close, but the largest hit to the cap last year by a sliver more was Jared Spurgeon. This one is, again, I think kind of obvious. Carey Price has a thick contract, but we're going to go and just give them like a 60 overall goalie, I guess. And yeah, they'll have to make do with that. There you go. That's a fair trade, right? We should do this again when NHL 22 drops, just because I know, you know, Pedersen is a free agent. I think Ovechkin is technically a free agent right now. There's some big names that are, you know, out there. I mean, Pedersen's an RFA, obviously, but still, um, yeah, it'll be cool. And there's going to be a lot of trades like Tarasenko, probably going to be the highest cap hit on St. Louis, but I don't even know if he'll still be there by the time we put this video out. I mean, I think so, because I'll try to get this one out soon, but Regardless, uh, it is Roman Yossi by only 1 million more than Duchesne. Subban Dooby Doo is the highest cap hit for New Jersey last year. And this one is probably going to be Anders Lee, but I'll double check. Huh. He's on LTIR, so his adjusted cap hit doesn't say anything. And that's kind of what I'm going off of here. So that's like everything considered, um, excluding performance bonuses. So I guess. 
I don't know. Barzell and Anders Lee had the the same total cap hit, but the adjusted it says Anders Lee didn't even have anything. I don't know. I guess I guess we'll go with Barzell taking up nearly 19% of the team's cap is the bread man. Wow. I'm thinking this one's going to be Shabbat, but let's just double check here. Yeah, it is Shabbat. Okay. So we have Claude Giroux that was just a sliver over Voracek, but there you go. And then on Pittsburgh, we have Evgeny Malkin. It was not Crosby. Carlson had the largest cap hit for San Jose by quite a bit. And this one, I don't really know what to do because these guys had the same adjusted cap hit against the team. And yeah, it's... Oh, man. I don't know what to do here because Tarasenko could be gone. But you know what? I'll just take Tarasenko for now. He's at the top. So, yeah, let's... Anyway, these two both had nine and a half. So, uh, I, I guess we'll just go with how we tie break on the other ones as well and just take the top one. So, Kucherov is gone. This one's Matthews. I'm almost sure of it. But, again, I will double check. Wow, the highest cap hit for the Vancouver Canucks was... The large defenseman himself, T. Weiler Myers. There you go. That's surprising. Mark Stone had the biggest hit last year for the Golden Knights. The Washington Capitals, it should be Ovechkin. I will double check that as well. And I feel like this one's going to be either... I, I think Hellebuck's on a good deal. I think it's Blake Wheeler. So the Jets actually is Wheeler by a million. So yeah, there you go. That's all the players added to free agency. So these are going to be the players available you know what screw it let's find out who the highest whoever well i guess never mind seattle won't have that yet so i take it back all right i'm gonna have to go back and double check some of these but i've noticed that i was searching by the next season for some of these so kucherov actually was on ltir so technically you know he wasn't even really against the cap so vasileski had the highest cap hit for tampa bay last year. I bet you there's already a comment about that too. I almost guarantee it. <laughs> All right, I think we should be good now. So let's just scroll through these players real quick here and see what's going on. So yeah, I sort of did this from the perspective of the team, like what players count the most against the cap, because like I said, they have to stay within the cap. So if they're hitting high against the cap, then to the team, that's probably like considered the highest paid player. They don't care about bonuses and stuff like that. The bonuses are basically just chump change. Oh, I didn't know I had that many saves. Hold on one moment. I don't even know why I bothered doing that. I don't need these to save anyway, really. But I guess if the game crashes or something, then it would be nice to have a backup, I suppose. But other than that, yeah, I don't really need it. So we will be the Seattle Kraken. Sure, let's continue. And I'm just gonna auto do the expansion draft. But anyway, that's not the important part. I just want to see who ends up signing where. I also don't know if that division swap is going to happen or not, but uh, let's wait and see. So owner mode off. Uh, let's add a contract here just for simplicity's sake. No, no, sure. But turn off the meetings. Okay, I think everything else should be fine. Can I just straight up sim past it? Oh yeah, auto draft. There we go. Team's going to be probably not very good, but I don't know. We'll see. Ooh, we got Kalorn. like that. Let's advance a day. Okay. All right, so many different dialogues here that I never pay any attention to. Uh, I really don't care about the draft either. I just want to get to free agents, if I'm going to be honest. So I'm not actually going to offer any contracts, but let's just go to free agency here and see. So yeah, it looks like everyone is here as expected. So if we start by overall, we get everyone. Okay, cool. Let's just simulate till the start of the next season and see if anyone's still here, first of all. And secondly what all the teams look like who signed who let's just have a quick look at our team here oh okay uh yeah yeah edit my lines i don't really care but that is not good we are not gonna win a lot of games guys i mean our defense is all right uh well the first two pairings anyway i'm so sorry i am so sorry regardless that's not the point anyway this is the point right here evgeny malkin is now going to be on the ducks and so is cam atkinson am i gonna miss some people I probably will, but anyway, defense, no, they're still the same. I think Carey Price and Bobrovsky were the two, but yeah, I, I suppose they don't really need that. I'm actually going to go to free agents real quick just to see if anyone is left over. So David Krejci's still there. I might just pick him up because I don't think anyone else is going to. And at this point, we can use all the help that we can get. Price is still here as well. Wow. All right. 
At 4.4 million. Okay, well, no one's going to sign him for the year. So I'll just offer him a contract. Never mind. I just realized we have zero cap space. How is that even possible? Well, anyways, I guess we don't have to look for goalies because I'm pretty sure... Oh. Vasilevsky, right? I think Vasilevsky is still... Yeah, okay. Next up, Arizona. Did they make any changes? It doesn't look like they added anyone to their offense. On defense, they... Re-added OEL? Am I missing something? Yeah, I guess they re-signed OEL on a cheaper deal. So, there you go. Nice. And that's... Seems like it. Did they get a goaltender? No. Boston still got Tuka Rask and Halak there. Starting lines. We've got... These three, am I going crazy? Oh, it was David Krejci, that's right. Uh, all right, well, doesn't look like they added anyone here. On defense, they got Roman Yossi. Well then, that's a great addition. Are you kidding? They brought Eichel back? It, Eichel was the player, right? I'm almost sure of it. But anyway, they also got Austin Matthews, and they got Tara Sank Show. So they definitely benefited from this. Uh, no one on defense doesn't look like, and I doubt they picked up. Yeah, okay. They ended up signing Eichel to a six-year, $9.1 million deal. All right. So they did get him a bit cheaper, I guess. What is with teams picking up the players they already had? I'm so confused. Ooh, Ovi is now on the Hurricanes. Very interesting. All right. Well, that's, that's huge for them, but I guess it's just sort of replacing their loss in Sebastian. Okay, and in net, no. Alright, so they basically just got Ovi. Columbus has Panarin back. And they got Giroux. Alright, that's a good first line. Wow, look at that. And then on defense, we've got Wierenski and Bufflin. Okay, interesting. They also picked up Jared Spurgeon. I almost skipped over that. And goaltenders, they're still rocking those two. Yeah, so there's a couple teams here that are already looking much improved. So let's see how they simulate. But let's have a look here at Calgary. So I'm trying to remember. I think it was Chuck. I'm pro okay. Why is everyone picking up the same players? It might not have been Kachuk. I have to double check, but come on. I guess they re-signed Kachuk. So he is making 6.1 for one year instead of the 7 million deal that he's on for... Let's see here. Hold on. So, wait. Let me double check again. Because, so last year, yes, it was Kachuk. And then active contracts. He is... I, I don't know what to tell you. Either way, they added Carlson and they added Subban. And then in net, they have... Okay, so no, they stayed there. And let's check out Chicago. They did not add any forwards on defense. They did not add any defense. And they did not add a goaltender. Interesting. And then we go to Colorado, who picks up Sebastian Aho to replace Miko Rantanen. So there you go. There's Seb. And they did not make any changes here. In net, they are still going with Grubauer. Ooh, Dallas picked up McDavid. 95 playing with Ben and Radulov. Okay, and then Pavelski here on the second line with Kiryanov and Hintz. But yeah, they picked up McDavid. Defensively, they... Stayed the same, and in net, yeah, they got Bishop and Hudobin, all right. This is going to be a scary team. That's going to be a scary one for this simulation. But let's go to Detroit. They picked up Zagan. So speaking of Dallas, there he is, Tyler. Now a Red Wing. Um, yeah, let's just have a quick look here. I think that's it for forwards. They did not pick up anyone from defense, and no goalies. All right, so they got Zagan, and that's about it. The Edmonton Oilers did not pick up any forwards. They did not pick up any defense either. And in terms of goalies, no. All right, they stayed the same. Just mcdavid -less. So these guys lost Bobrovsky. They did not add any forwards. They did not add any defense. And in terms of goalies, they did not add anything there either. They have Dreger, who is technically a Seattle Kraken. But anyway, let's uh, move on. LA Kings, they... Dropped Dewey. They don't have any forwards added here. Defense. Nope, they weren't able to replace Dewey, but they did get Vasilevsky. So there he is. There's the goalie. Minnesota picked up Miko Rantanen. So they have 90 overall Rantanen playing with Erickson Ek and Kaprizov. Kirill the Thrill on the first line. Defensively, they did not replace Spurgeon, it doesn't look like. But still have a decent 
defense here and in net. Yeah, they got Kakonin. But uh, Susie was also a draft pick of Seattle. So, yeah. The Montreal Canadiens lost their goaltender and they... Did not pick up any forwards with that extra... Mo oh, this they did. They got Blake Wheeler. I almost completely skipped over him. They got Blake. All right, so he is on the first line there. Defensively, they stayed the same. And I'm pretty sure that there's only three goalies. And Vasilevsky is the only one that got signed. But I'm going to check anyway. The Devils lost P.K. Subban. And they got Mark Stone, 89 overall. So there you go. Shabbat as well. He will be on the first pair there with Damon. Okay, and yeah, they've got Blackwood in net. So Shabbat and Stone, that's two huge pickups for New Jersey. The Predators, let's see here. They lost Roman Yossi, if I remember correctly. Did not pick up any forwards. Did not pick up any defensemen. I'm guessing they did not pick up any goalies. I'm also pretty sure Rene retired. So the Island, oh, what was that? Hold on, let me retry that. The Islanders, there we go, got it, nailed it did lose quite an asset. They lost Barzell. Did not replace him. Clearly, their forwards there. Also, Jordan Eberle, an honorary Seattle Kraken, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I'll probably do those roster changes soon, but yeah, we'll, we'll just see what happens. But I'll, I'll likely move the players over to the Seattle team that I created soon. So yeah, that's in the queue. But, in terms of defense, they did not add anybody, and goaltending, we got Varlamov. Alright, so let's move on to the Rangers now. They did not add any forwards. They did not add any defensemen. And I'm guessing, no, no goalie. Ottawa did not add any forwards, defense, they... Okay, alright. Maybe no one wanted to sign here. I'm guessing that's possibly what happened, but... They lost Shabbat, so that's very unfortunate. But regardless, Philly, let's see what they did. They lost um, Giroux and replaced him with Dylan Larkin. Okay, there you go. Second line, 87 overall. Not bad. On defense, they ended up getting Tyson Berry somehow. Provorov and Katahat. Pittsburgh lost Evgeny Malkin. And it doesn't look like they added any forwards to replace Evgeny, but they... Nope, never mind. Didn't add any defensemen either, so I guess they just stayed the same. So Pittsburgh did not add any players. They just lost Malkin. Um, I guess in terms of San Jose, did not add any forwards either. Defense, nope. So they just basically lost EK65, and that is about it. Decent. St. Louis, they lost Tarasenko and replaced him with Patty Kane. Nice. 92 overall. That's going to be a really good line. And then on defense, doesn't look like they added any of the defense there. And nothing in terms of goalies. Let's go to Tampa, who lost their goalie, Vasilevsky. They did not add anyone in terms of the forwards that we dropped to free agency. And also on top of that, their first line left winger is now a Seattle Kraken player as well. Victor Hedman... All right, yeah, there's no one on defense, and then goalies are still there, but no Vazzy. That's going to be a big hit. The Leafs lost Austin Matthews, did not add any of the forwards that we had dropped. In terms of defense, they stayed the same. No, they didn't. They got Ryan Suter, so that's a thing, but he wasn't dropped for that reason. He was just in free agency because he got bought out, and there you go. All right, moving on. Vancouver, they lost... I think it was Tyler Myers, wasn't it? But, yeah, they did not add any forwards here. Defense, they got Dewey. That's a good pickup. So, Drew Doughty, 91 overall. And then they got Thatcher and Holpe as their goalies. All right. The Golden Knights lost Mark Stone. Did not pick up any forwards from what I can see. Did not pick up any defense either. And, yeah, they did not pick up any goalies. So, there you have it. The Golden Knights stayed the same. Last team here, the Jets, they lost Blake Wheeler. They did not pick up... Oh, they did. They got Getzlav. All right, so they picked up a forward there for the second line. Defense, the same, and goaltending is going to be Hellebuck. All right, so who do you guys think did the best there? I think Buffalo was one of the teams that did really good, and there was another team close to them, alphabetically, that did very well as well. But 
Yeah, let's just see what happens. The only reason I haven't moved those players to the Seattle Kraken roster yet is because they basically won't exist then, I'm pretty sure, because the way it works is you can't just add in a 30-second team. You have to do the expansion draft, and I don't know if there's a way to make those players available or how that works, but yeah, it's definitely not an easy task, if even possible at all, to get that Seattle Kraken team as is placed into a franchise mode at least not that i'm aware of just because it's what we do let's check out the deadline see who's available which players are on the chopping block we've got flurry petrie wheeler so there we go there's one of the players they picked up i guess that's not working out for them nick letty who is now a red wings player i'm pretty confident vander kane tata Dobin and Keith. There you have it. Philadelphia obtains Gallagher a third, John Merrill and a fifth in exchange for a first, LeBurge, LeBurg, and Oscar Lindblom. There you have it. Nice. All right, the simulation is done, and the Edmonton Oilers, did they even make any moves? I'm trying to remember, because I'm pretty sure they just won their division, but from what I recall, they only lost McDavid, and that was it. So I'm going to double check quick, because... I'm just curious more than anything, so... Did they... Oh, they got to Tar, but that was the trade, I guess. Oh, he was available at the deadline. They added a... Def no, they didn't add a defenseman. Weird. All right. I, I don't know why they did so good, but okay. Yeah, they dominated the Pacific there, but let's go to the entire league, and they did win the President's Trophy. All right. Very interesting. Columbus with 106. They were right there. Pittsburgh, 104. Tampa Bay, 103. I guess they didn't need Vazzy. All right, there you have it. Dallas did well. So let's just scroll through quickly here just to show you all the teams. Top 16 teams made it. That very rarely happens, but it's satisfying when it does. We did awful. That's, you know, I expected that just based on the team that the AI drafted. It was horrendous. I'm not even going to look at our individual player stats because it's not really important to the video. I just more so want to check out the entire league to see if any of the players who did get moved did very well. And Matthews did just that. He got 105 points. Same with McDavid on the Dallas Stars. Eichel with Buffalo as well. Put up 100. Tricidal did well. Crosby did well. Nate Mack did well. Malkin did pretty good for the Ducks there. Tarasenko did good with the Sabres. Uh, okay, yeah, Ovechkin did pretty good. Giroux. Let's check out goaltenders, which I guess the only one we're really needing to look for is Vasilevsky, who is not on this front page from what I see. So I guess he didn't have himself a great year. Oh my word. How many wins did this guy get? Was he on the worst team in the league? There he is. Wow. 26, 34, and 3. Poor guy. All right, well, let's simulate the playoffs here and then just have a look at the awards in the playoff tree. I can already tell my voice is getting mad at me and this is only the first video of the day, so that's awesome. And the Buffalo Sabres go on to win the Stanley Cup with the help of Austin Matthews. Very interesting. So let's go look at the awards and see. I'm pretty sure, was it Buffalo that also picked up Bufflin or... Let's go have a look at their lines again. I'm just, you know, curious. Oh, I can't. Crap. All right. Well, let's go to... Ah, uh, but if they became free agents, then I guess they won't be there. Whatever. I'll. You guys will know and let me know in the comments and I'll see while editing it. So regardless, let's have a look at the awards and the... Playoff tree, just to see how everything went down. So, there you go. There's the team awards. Individual, we got Matthews with the Art Ross and the Hart. Petrangelo with the Norris. Matthews with the Lady Bing. Kirill the Thrill gets the Calder. Con Smythe goes to Eichel. Merzlikens with the Vesna. McElhaney with the William M. Jennings. Uh, Johns with the Bill Masterton. Green with the Jack Adams. Couturier with the Selkie. Matthews with the Lindsay. And Johnny T with, well, I guess Johnny T is Johnny Taves. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, Tavares gets some Reese Rocket Richard. There you go. Or is Johnny T. John Tavares? I don't know if Jonathan T. Anyway, I don't know. Here's the playoff tree. Uh, Buffalo didn't even struggle. They went to five games, five games, sweep five games. They've never had an easier run in their life. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any other ideas of different free agent styled videos like this that you want me to try out, let me know. And other than that, yeah, just hope you're having a... Great day, great week, whatever it is, um, or I hope you have a great week, depending on when I upload this. And that's about it, guys, so thank you very much, and I'll catch you soon.